Okay, let's go ahead and start. Uh, today we're kind of talking, we're it's still on the topic of plants, but this is, uh, your video's still playing there. Uh, this is soil, which is basically the meal for plants. Plants get their food from dirt. Yes. Davey, I forgot to bring soil. That's what you asked us for? Yes, don't worry about it. I would have asked you. I got, I got some. I don't know if it's going to work. I think you would want my soil. My dog is going to. No, it's been rainy since this couple weeks. Build it out. We're working with it, okay? It's been rainy since this yeah. couple weeks. That's the whole idea. Okay, so soil is soil is the dinner. Okay, you got to figure. That's where the plants get the stuff. Now, I'm not talking to pitcher plant. I'm not talking to Venus flytrap. They get their nutrition from bugs. Uh, but soil. Well, we'll get into it. What makes up soil? Uh, there's two types of soil, the living part and the dead part. The living part is, yes, go ahead. The living part is what we would call humus, H-U-M-U-S, humus, uh, probably misspelled that. But it is dead plants, dead leaves, worms, bugs, stuff like that that used humus. to be alive. What? Humus and hummus are spelled the same way. Uh, hummus is the food, humus is the plant. So. I know, but they're spelled the same? Uh, one of them's got O-U-S and one is U just U-S. Yeah, hummus is the one with just U-S. Okay, so. maybe O-U-S. I told you I'm bad with spelling. That's not what I'm here for. <laughs> they didn't pay me for my spelling abilities. Uh, and I, I can recognize it, whereas I can't remember it. My kids used to play with me when, I was, when we used to live in Louisiana and we'd drive up here for 12 hours. They'd sit back in the back seat and sell, spell simple two or three letter words. And in time, how long it for me to figure out what they spell? Wait a minute. T H E is the. And I mean, I can spell, but I've got to. And I, I thought it was. It's probably because you're getting old. No, this is when I was young. Uh, I actually had a friend who was a teacher. Said no, I, I've got a, uh, I've got a visual. I'm a visual learner. I have to see things. That's why I know sign language. And if you give me the, I used to know sign language. And if you show me the word in sign language, I got it. But if you spell it out in letters, yeah. it takes me forever. I got to write down what you. I've got to see it. I've got. I'm a visual person. Mm -hmm. That's why if you ask me a question, I come bend over. I'm not trying to be, you know, creepy bending over your and shoulder and whatnot. It's I've got to see what you're talking about. And if you tell me, ask me a question. If I don't see it, I have no idea what you're talking about. I've got to physically see it. I'm an artist. I'm the same way. That's why I couldn't do virtual. Because I, I can't do that. <coughs> but, you know. When well, we went six weeks at Sephora, it was easier because we only had two classes. Yeah, I'm a hands on. But the point, okay, so. And I mean, you can read along. Uh, texture is the part of the soil that's actually you feel. Uh, they make, there's three types of soil, non living soil. This is the minerals, not the, not the living stuff. Sand, silt, and clay. Now, I'm not talking the different makeups of them. These are the sizes of them. Sand is a part. Sand is a part. Sorry to interrupt you. Four students who uh, that are, attend Eisenhower and arrive at Eisenhower. Okay, so these are parts. Sand, silt, and clay are not what they're made up. It's the size of the particles. You go to a beach and you see sand on the beach, we're talking about that size of sand. It can be made up of clay. It can, it, I mean, it can be made up of different minerals. The size of the particle is the, determines whether it's sand, silt, or clay. Silt, you ever heard of river silt? It's, it's smaller than sand. Sand is the biggest of the three. You know about, if you've ever been to a beach, you know about what size it is. Silt is the tough, it's, it's small enough to actually be carried along in rivers and, and deposited and stuff. And clay, hey, we live in Oklahoma. If you don't know what clay is, clay is small. It's very small, okay? Uh, sand particles, and it just basically said the same thing. Most soils are a combination of the three, and this little lab we're going to do is going to try to determine that. There is a, there's a way to do it. Uh, depending on the breakdown, this may be all one type of soil, it could be all three. Uh, but you're going to use that to figure out what the texture of the soil is. Uh, again, they actually include gravel as, a big, as one of the fourth ones. Uh, just big rocks is all it is, gravel. Uh, Sand is, this is millimeters and this is inches. So sand, the biggest one we have is about half, or it's about one thirty-second of an inch, which is really, really small. Uh, silt, about there, it's really, really small. And clay, you can't really see it on this scale. Uh, 
Okay, the type of lab we're going to do is we're going to take the dirt I have here and we're going to put it in these bottles. And this is not the most accurate way. This is just to do it in the class. They actually suggest a mason jar, which is the one on the right. But you just take dirt in here, about half a bottle of dirt. We've got two bottles. Fill it with water. Make sure the water gets all the way through there. Fill it with water, dirt. And you're going to shake that puppy. Oh, I've seen these. And then I've once you shake it, actually. let it shake as hard as you can. Make sure the lid's on, please, because otherwise okay, dirt's okay. everywhere, mud's everywhere. You're going to sit there and let it settle. Heavy stuff is going to settle out first and then different layers up. And what you should be able to do is, depending on how many layers you got, you should be able to look and see the different layers. And then you can do some math and figure out the percentages. Again, depends on it. I don't know what type of dirt this is. They just gave it, brought it to me a few years ago. It's been in there. Uh, but we'll see. It'd be nice if it's different levels. This is the formula they use. I've actually got a chart. Okay, uh, if it's 100% silt, 100% uh, sand, 100% clay, and then from there you break it down into percentages and you decide the type of soil. Loam is considered the best soil for growing things. So if it falls into this area here, that's the best. Sand, okay, the bigger ball of sand is it's got great drainage. It can drain water out real good. You don't have standing water around sand. If you've ever been to a beach, the, be the water comes up, the water goes out, the water's gone. It doesn't stay around. Uh, uh, clay, which we have in Oklahoma, the problem with clay is the particles are so small, water comes up, it's not draining off. At least not down. It can drain off left and right, but it's not going down. Uh, that's why you have standing water a lot of times here in Oklahoma. We have a bedrock of clay, and it's not draining down, so unless it drains off or evaporates, it's not going anywhere. <coughs> but it's good about holding water. Silt is kind of in the middle of the two. Uh, so the, reason, the best type of dirt you can have is a mixture of all three. Sand portion allows it to drain. Clay portion allows the water to stay. Silt, kind of, again, kind of a mixture of the two. Uh, if you look at dirt... This is the basic breakdown. This is by volume, and you'll know this is by weight. There is a difference because uh, organic matter is only about 5% of the dirt. Organic, again, is dead bodies, leaves, bugs, things like that. Uh, okay. Minerals, which is the dirt, the non-organic, dead part of the, of the dirt. No life, it's just dead. It's like taking a multivitamin in the morning. Okay, and then there is air in the soil, and that's a fact. They've got, if you've ever seen people that work in gardens and yards and stuff, they get this big old thing that looks like a ball with a bunch of spines sticking out. They'll roll it back and forth on the yard so you can get dirt in it. You can get air in the dirt. Uh, people like earthworms. Earthworms are great because they will actually dig through the soil and give air. Plants need air just like you do, so they get air through the soil. Water can't drain if it don't have air in the soil. And then again, you need to have water in the soil. Plants need to drink, just like you do. Then you can kill a plant without water. Now this is what it was if you did it by volume. If you took something like a bag and dumped it in there. Okay? This is by weight. Okay? The mineral part, the non-living part, by volume, but it's the heaviest part. So if you take dirt, and take just the, the, the mineral dead part out, but it's the heaviest part of the dirt. Okay? Organic matter is very, very light in comparison. Because leaves, there's not a lot there too. Okay? There is also something we call pH. Anybody ever heard of pH? pH is actually a formula. Right. <laughs> it's, it's actually a formula. I'm not going to get into it because... I had my the first. Is that what is that what's in a pH value? Well, no pH is yeah. No pH is a is a, is a it's a measurement. Okay, if you take this is what is called hydrochloric acid. Okay, and this is sodium hydroxide. Hydrochloric acid, stomach acid. Okay, and if you get really 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 strong hydrochloric acid. 
It will burn, it'll blister, it'll eat through a lot of stuff. There's even stronger acids than that. Uh, not sodium hydroxide, the other end of the scale. This is, if, if you have, we used to have a uh, slaughterhouse in Lawton down on 2nd and uh, Lee Boulevard. Had a friend that worked there. What you do is you take sodium hydroxide, really, really concentrated sodium hydroxide, and it will dissolve cow bones. So you get a vat of this stuff and just chuck the cow bones in there and it dissolves it, they're gone. So it'll, it'll flat kill you too. But this is the two ends of the pH scale, okay? This is about pH 1 or 2, and this is pH 13 or 14. So both ends will kill you, okay? Both ends will kill you. Right in the middle is pH 7. pH 7 is like water, things like that. Okay, there's no pH. So the, the nearer you are to 7, the more neutral. Okay? Uh, blood in your body, it's about pH of 6.5, 6.5. Uh, How do you get it to 7? You don't want to get your blood to 6 to 7. Some, th some things you need a pH, a higher pH. Okay? Um, orange juice, around 4 or 5. So you can, you can consume things that are lower pHs. Four, five, six, seven. You can consume that. You can even consume stuff higher up. Over in this end would be the live bathroom cleaner. Over in this thing would be other ends. Okay, so pH is there. Why am I saying this? When you're testing your soil, and I've got a meter in the back office back there. I may pull it out later. When you're testing your soil, you're testing it for pH. Why? Because pH affects how things will work in a plant. Nitrogen is one of the biggest plant nutrients out there. Plants need nitrogen. Most fertilizers, and put yourself on up, most fertilizers have nitrogen in there. I know nobody knows this, but you know whenever they, they make a... Uh, my mind has gone blank. Like nitrogen uh, in No, the, dr the drugs... Uh, uh, You ever heard of anhydrous? Everybody talking about make, making the drug with anhydrous? Uh, homemade stuff, what's? Not heroin? Drugs. What? No, not heroin, heroin's a plant. Uh, stuff they make with lighter fluid and things like that. PCP? No. Juice, wet. Where are you getting close? Oh. Yeah, juice. Okay, I'll remember it. I might have an old timer's moment. But when they take about anhydrous, it's anhydrous ammonium, which is uh, ammonia, which is you get a lot of nitrogen from it, okay? Nitrogen is something plants need. Why? Because DNA dinitro is from nitrogen. You have to have nitrogen whenever you have amino acids. That's one of the requirements of amino acids. You have to have nitrogen. So if you're going to put... You have amino acids in your body? Yeah. You got to have. Anywhere you got muscles, you got amino acids. Nitrogen. Say, but if you're gonna put so if you're gonna put if you're gonna put hey, let's finish up. If you're gonna put nitrogen in a plant, nitrogen mostly reacts good in the pH of five to eight range. You go outside that, it doesn't do too well. So you gotta get the pH adjusted so the plants can absorb stuff. Phosphorus is another big one. Uh, match heads, the thing that causes the matches to light, not the sulfur, but the other thing they call white phosphorus. The army fires are out there. You see the white billowing smoke out in the field. That's white phosphorus. There's also red phosphorus and other phosphorus. That's a big thing for plants. They need phosphorus. Uh, potassium. Some versions of salt. Potassium is big. You can do that. Your body needs potassium to adjust. That's how the, the, your body uses your electrical nerve conduction. Again, it's got to be in your body. It's got to be in the plants needed. But these are all the pH ranges that they absorb it best in. Okay. So anywhere from about five to about nine, most of them fall into that category. So plants need a fixed pH. They can't go too acid, they can't go too base. They have to have a pH. So it's adjustable, you need to adjust your thing. And if your plant's not growing very well, check your pH. These are pH, the pH scale from zero, 14 is where it goes. Battery acid all the way at zero. Drain, uh, drain cleaner all the way at 14. Okay? And then everywhere in between. Coffee, pH of 5. So I drink coffee every day. Our stomach is a pH of 
No, your stomach is a pH of... Uh, it's a poo. Oh, I yeah. can see the fillers. That's stomach acid over your pH of 1. Oh. Okay. Talk about the stomach acid. So yeah. Oh, see. stomach tab. That's an acid. I thought you said blood was like a six and a half. Why is it at eight? Blood. Well, yeah, this one says eight. I've got another book that says six and a half, so. And how much water do we have okay, in the water? It's about 70% of your body's water, so. 70% of water, yeah. So why do we drink water? Why do you drink water? Yeah. Because you don't have, it's like a plant. You don't have enough water. Your body runs on water. What's in water that your body needs? Alkaline. Use the water. Water is what's called the universal solvent. It dissolves more things than anything else. So your body needs it because it dissolves the platelets and the blood and the stuff like that. It dissolves the lymphatic fluid. It, it, everything that works through your body, all the liquids you have in your body, is water with something dissolved in it. Uh, plants need water because they take uh, water... For the roots. Yeah, they, for the roots, yeah. But what they got to do is, on what the plants do is, they take water either through the roots or through the, the leaves, and the carbon dioxide you breathe out, or cow farts, however you want to do it, they take both of these, and what they do is they can, they make oxygen and sugar. So the plants can't make oxygen and sugar unless they have carbon dioxide and water, yes. So if it did not rain on earth, we would have no plants and no water. Unless they got it through the roots. Unless they got it through the roots. Yes. Groundwater. Groundwater. You have to have water. You can't. Because all water is really like no, water. Water. You no, water. You water. 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 Well, it depends. It's, you need yeah. high hydrogen. Yeah. I actually want to watch it. And oxygen, and this is not balanced, and you get water. And hydrogen is the most common element in the universe. Our sun is 99% oxygen. Okay, oxygen, a little bit of this. So, but what I'm saying is, okay, let's get back. Hold on. Hey, let's get back. I'm trying to get to there where we can go. Pangea. Actually, yes, they talked about that back when... I was it's the study that all of the continents were once uh, one. together yes. and they all spread out because I don't know the how. Oh, explosions and shit like that. Okay. Yeah, it's the water. Peace, yeah. pH scale. Yeah. If you want to grow things with pH, not only do you have to have a certain pH to get the stuff, but certain fruits and vegetables need a certain pH to grow better. Potatoes grow better in the 4.8 to 6.5 range. So you got to look and check your pH. Uh, if you're doing potatoes, they also, especially in this area, you take Epsom salts, which is a, it's a, which is a, which is a salt, and you mix it with the soil to change the pH. Uh, so you need to make sure the pH of the of the soil. So I can grow potatoes because I have the Epsom salt in my house right now. You would check the soil to make sure the pH is correct. And you go from there, yes. Nutrient availability, again, nutrients in nitrogen, P, potassium, uh, phosphorus, K, potassium. This is at different pHs. So if you're around pH 7, you're maxing them all out, pretty much. And again, this is just, okay, don't really need it that much. Nitrogen is actually considered most important. Now, we already talked about that. Nitrogen, the atmosphere you breathe, is about 73, 74% nitrogen. Except for peanuts and other legumes, plants can't use the nitrogen in the air. Okay? Because the nitrogen in the air. I'm allergic to peanuts. Yeah, well. I'm allergic to all the avocados. The nitrogen we have in the air. Mm -hmm. Avocados are good. You can put them with tacos. Um, the nitrogen we have in the air is what is called triple bonded. It is about as inert as you can get. It can't do anything. So what happens is you go out during a thunderstorm or lightning storm, lightning strikes, and what it does is it'll break this bond apart, and the nitrogen can break up, and now the plants can extract it. Or peanuts will take the nitrogen directly from the air, and they will fix it in the soil. 
That's why people in uh, Georgia and areas like that, they grow peanuts. It's great for fertilizing the ground. It'll take the atmospheric nitrogen and it'll put it in the ground. Peanuts are a great fertilizer, and you can also eat them when you're done. I'm learning. Okay. So nitrogen is that. Uh, phosphorus. You need it because it's in photosynthesis. Without phosphorus, you can't have photosynthesis. Without photosynthesis, you can't breathe. Photosynthesis is what makes oxygen. Okay? And potassium, it actually helps with the movement of water in the, in the plant, same way it does with you, movement of water and electrons through your body. Okay? Okay, so the way we're going to do this, got some dirt. I've got two bottles because I want more than one. Somebody who's going to volunteer, just take a piece of paper and make a funnel so you don't make a mess. And you're going to pour about I half. Shake them. What? I want to shake them. That's fine. You're going to fill these about half full with dirt. And you guys, we're not measuring. The official term is approximately half full. It's not that critical. You need at least half so you got enough room to look. Any more than half, you're going to not have enough shaking room. Once you do that, somebody's going to volunteer for this, or something more than somebody's. This is a group activity. I got water. I used for coffee. I just refilled it. Just water. You're going to fill this up, both bottles up. Once you fill it up, wait for it to get all the way to the bottom because it's going to be dry. Pour some more, pour some more. It's going to take a while to get all this thing filled up until the water is pretty close to the top. Both of them, and you got plenty of water here. Then you're gonna make sure you seal it really, really, really tight. And then Miss Custis is gonna shake them. She says she wants to shake. Shake really good. Make sure the dirt mixes. Make sure everything mixes. Okay. Once you shake it, put it down there and walk away for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then we're gonna go from there. Okay. So it doesn't matter. Your funnel is gonna be a piece of paper.